zero. <laughs> oh yes, folks. Hello. Look at this. Hello. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> look at that look. What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh. He's but you you knock stuff off of me. He doesn't like he does not like being on YouTube. But hello folks, for I am the only the one the only I am a hobo Tom. And there you just saw the the hobo cat. And see so here, I do apologize for getting this up. Actually it's gonna be up really late. And I have one calendar correction to make. You can tell us the morning because I have my glasses on. I had a late light I had a late night last night. So but I did watch SmackDown, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to give you my view on SmackDown. But first, wow, I put up I think one or two questions. And wow did I get a lot of responses. I mean mainly because Tamiya was down, we had to go to an alternate source. I will do not reveal my secrets. Morning light's weird. But let's see here. Let me get through this whole list. I better start marking stuff down too. Why is Waldo? You, sir. No one knows where you are because you know what? That ref tossed you out of here. See, I better start looking stuff up because this is a long list. Wow, I'm impressed. I guess actually it was also kind of empty too. Let's see here. Tra -la, la Walk out of here, sir. Walk very, very slowly. Eating fish? You told Nikki Cross to take it all off? Hey, Dot, you know you're kung fu fighting. Matsu OMG
Ruby, you're my tag team partner? Conferences, you are superior, everything else inferior. Master Carve, you, sir, you, sir, are a part of Mundo Madness. Michael, 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 you are that luchador on a forklift. Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. I know I'm going to get this wrong, so I apologize. Because I didn't, like, fit. I, I didn't, like, expect so many people to respond to me. But let's see here. Consensus 18? You know that Jordan has back. Check out that too. Holy shit.
I'm fresher. You, sir, you're not fresh, but you're a part of the El Generico band. Cuddles, you always win by dirty pin. I almost can't believe I have these two, but Joey Janela, if that's really you, you sir can crawl out of here. And Rampage, you, sir, you're just listening to your briefcase boombox. Jammed, you sir just jammed down to the air guitar. And wow, that was a long list of stuff. Again, I'd like to thank everyone. So, wow, that took up eight minutes. That's going to take a while to make, but that's okay. So, let's see here. Now it's time to talk about some SmackDown, finally. And I am Vincent K. McMahon. And I want to invite everyone to the Thunderdome, baby! Wow, that was an interesting entrance. Um, the This Thunderdome concept is actually weird. And the main reason it's weird is because, like, there were, like, empty screens. I think people put teddy bears up. Um, the screens went blank. Or went black. There were people sleeping. Which I don't know is, if that's, I don't know if that's a good sign or not. Um, one guy looked like he was on his, like, cell phone the whole time. So it, it almost looked like your typical WWE crowd. But it was interesting. Um, so the Vince opened up the show. Then, of course, the Fiend showed up. And I'm like, oh, Vince is going to get mandible clawed. That's going to be interesting. But no. I need a little jump juice, a little jump juice there. But no. Braun Strowman shows up. He confronts the Fiend. 
they stare at each other. Then you have technical difficulties. Because Retribution shows up. Um, they jump, uh, the lights go off again, the fiend disappears. And then once the fiend disappears, Braun's alone with Retribution. Retribution jumps Braun, they beat him up. The entire locker room empties out. It's funny, the Miz is the last one. And he's very conspicuous by it too. By being the final one to show up in the ring. Indeed. Uh, Braun's pissed off at everyone because he's like, I don't need your help. I'm the monster. As we'll see a little bit later in the show. Uh, then the first match, Seamus um, Sheamus and Big E. Kind of a classic wrestling match. It's always good to see that tie up. Uh, let's see here. They tie up. Sheamus gets the better of Big E. He goes up to the top rope. Flying clothesline by Sheamus. Then the, the 10 beats of the Belfry. Or whatever he calls it. Then they were having some technical difficulties. Again, and you always wonder, it's like, oh, what's, what's going to happen? Uh, Seamus works through that. And then, of course, there's all, then of course there's all the other WWE people around the ring. A Big E hit two belly to bellies in a row. He, However, you missed that. Well, well, actually, then he did his little splash. Um, Seamus kicks out. Uh, Big E eats. A big knee. Because Seamus got rolled to the outside to, to catch his little breath after that pin. After he kicked out of the pin. Big E eats the knee when he tr goes for that diving oh, spear through the ropes. I knew I thought of something. Uh, then he gets posted for his efforts. Uh, Seamus hits white noise. And then Corbin and Riel start fighting on the outside. And this led to a distracted roll-up. But he actually wins because Seamus is distracted by the two heels fighting. Uh, this was a good enough match. I didn't need the distraction, really. I'll say it's a cheeseburger match. Then we have Jeff Hardy. Um, Jeff Hardy got jumped from someone. He said someone fell on the back of his knee. But as we see in, in the replay, AJ Styles, after he beat up some guy from Retribution, saw Jeff and took his knee out from underneath him. Smart move, AJ. And then Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura versus the Lucha, Lucha, Lucha House Party. Wow, this was, at, this was actually really good. The pacing was good. Again, it's a fun match. I don't think the Lucha House Party could put on a boring match if they actually tried. Um, Cesaro, he can he can keep up the pace. Shinsuke seems to be a step or so behind, but still, that's kind of natural feeling, especially with his more strong style of wrestling versus a Lucha style of wrestling. It makes sense. I think I, I posted this feels like Ring of Honor in New Japan taking on CMLL. So it did have that feeling. Uh, Metal League. When he went to the top rope, he did get caught by Cesaro. And then uh, that that transition into a sit-up powerbomb. Uh, the chops. Again, Luchadors know how to eat, knew how to throw those chops because they just reverberate. Even in an empty arena, like the Amway Center, you can really hear those chops. So that's just amazing. Uh, eventually Cesaro counters that, uh, picks him up for a draping suplex across the top rope. Now, Grand Middle League, that springboard hurricane off the top. Again, it's totally amazing. Cesaro definitely knows how to work that. Cesaro learned something in Ring of Honor. He learned that in Ring of Honor and Shikara, he learned that whole lucha style, which is good. The fast pace, frenetic pace. That's good. Again, that's one thing WWE should really copy from New Japan. Is if you go to NXT, then then because they bought up so many companies, it's like okay, go across the seas to Britain for a little bit, learn the British style, go work, or or at least work with people that have different styles. It just 
add something. It's 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 more than the WWE style that 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 people typically get bored with. Then then it got a little botchy for some reason. Um, let's see, Dorado hit a flying cross body. Again, he's so angle, so agile though. But then we got a little botchy because he went for his triple moonsault. After the first one, he landed kind of awkwardly on Shinsuke Nakamura's knee. So he literally, so you can see him literally push him. I guess he misjudged it a little bit. I mean, I guess that's that's to be expected. Uh, he hit the other two, but Cesaro came in for the save. Grand Metalik looked dead because he had a really bad botch after a miss. Her Karana through the ropes. He went for the top ropes. Cesaro was on the outside. He tried to hit a Hurricanrana. He kind of missed because I want to say when you do that, you're trying to get the back of your knees onto your sh opponent's shoulders and then let your momentum bring you down and then force your opponent, you flip your opponent that way. This didn't happen because it's like his ankles barely grazed the chest of Cesaro. And he just like flopped. And for a couple of minutes, it's like, dude, he looks like a dead body out there. I'm like, oh god. No, he just concussed himself. But uh Kaliso stood over him. Uh Shinsuke Nakamura kind of, kind of toyed with, with, with kicking him a little bit. So I guess it wasn't that bad. But then again when um Pac like, broke his ankle, which looked terrible. Uh, Chris Jericho began to beat him up again, being the heel that he was. So, I mean, Pac Lou, like, you could see, like, like, foot went 90 degrees. It was just bad looking. This was bad looking, but these guys are used to taking so many bumps, though. It's, it, it just looked weird. Because then Cesaro did the flip, he's like, oops. And it was like a weird delayed flip, too. Um, and then Lindsay Dorado. So flippy. And Cesaro can go with it. Um, he and Cesaro traded, like, flippy pop-up roll-up things. Eventually, Cesaro did get the pop-up roll-up. I don't even know how they did that, but that looked amazing. Cesaro and Shinsuke retained their belt. Even though it was bocce, it was still a good cheeseburger match. And Lindsay and Dorado's upset because he lost. Kalisa's like, dude, it's okay. He's like, no, it's not okay. Then the three of them start fighting amongst themselves. There are rumors that because all three brands of WWE, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT are on TV, that when they have a draft, people will be able to go to all three areas. You might see, let's say, you might see the Lucia House Party go back to NXT for a while because their style's more suited towards that. Who knows? Then there's a recap of what happened earlier than the Mandy Rose interview. And she still feels the good in Sonya Deville. Someone was having a Star Wars binge -thon. And I do kind of feel bad for both Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Because if you didn't hear the news, there was some like psycho stalker that broke into Sonya Deville's house. The cops should just beat him. Um, Titus O'Neil, uh, the cops did what they had to do. Like, he had a knife, zip tie, duct tape. It was not going to go well for, for those for those two ladies, unless the cops intervened. Now, I don't care how great a martial artist you are. Martial arts do, does nothing in a knife fight, especially if you do not have said knife. But, yeah, so, like, this whole situation was kind of weird. She still feels the good in, in, in Sonya Deville. And she actually referenced, after what happened this weekend, I still feel the good in you. So... We'll see where that goes. And then they still have Pyro, which is nice. Sasha and Bailey came out. Corey Graves does his typical heel interview. 
Naomi shows up, and wow, Naomi looks amazing. That outfit she wears. I don't, I don't know how it stays on her, though, but that's, that's I think that's what everyone, I think I mentioned, would, would you do something to to a certain part of uh, Naomi's body? And I think that's when everyone kind of responded. <laughs> That's again. This is Discord, and you you can tell when I'm posting those kind of questions, and that many people are responding. You know, it's kind of a dullest show. Even though the wrestling was good, every, this is one of those shows. The wrestling was good. The segments in, in in between were okay, but you just feel like you have to entertain yourself, though. So we have a beat the clock challenge. Um, it's like because Naomi challenged both Sasha and Bailey, so you're like, who's going to take me on first? So Sasha Banks takes her on first, and the stipulation is whoever beats the clock gets to go second in their match versus Asuka for SummerSlam. So this actually had implications, and that makes it feel a little bit more important. Uh, so Sasha Banks versus Naomi to start off. Um, again, little Sasha Banks goes right for the Luthez press. Starts to beat up Naomi. Um... And we hit that full Nelson butt slam, and then the rolling round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Let's see, her then went to commercial. Then it was Chinlock Mania from Sasha. Then it was a takedown and a bank statement to end the match. This was an okay match. It served its purpose. It was a ham sandwich. And the time to beat was 3 minutes and 39 seconds. So then Bailey got in the ring. She immediately jumped Naomi. She's like, come on, ref, start this match. But Naomi actually has to get up, and she has to respond to the ref. So, so, it, took, so it took a little bit for that before the clock started. Give Naomi a little time to recover. Um, Bailey heavy on the strikes, the suplex in the corner. Um, you could tell there was one time. And a lot of WWE wrestlers have to work on this, but you could tell either Bailey told Naomi the spot or told her the time, because you could like like literally see like like her mouth go right over Naomi's ear. Um, stuff happened then. And Naomi rolls up Bailey and gets the win. That was not foreseeable, and I'll tell you what. I think he does that like super Brazilian wax too. You cheeky camera person. Because this was really I didn't see Naomi winning at all. But I'll tell you what, that was also a ham sandwich of a match. Oscar shows up. Um, Sasha gets kicked in the head, and she's like drops like a sack of potatoes. Uh, Bailey gets hers. Um, Bailey. Then we have. I might have to edit this tonight. Shoot. So yeah, this might be like getting up here, folks. I just all the time, and I do have to get. No, I still have some time. But I have to get my button gear. Uh, then we have Alexa Bliss segment about all the all the going ons with her. Then Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross looks so cute. She looks so pathetic. She looks genuinely sad. She has a cute sad face. I think Nikki Cross needs a hug. And she said, Nikki Cross talking about Alexa Bliss. Uh, I talked about the new IC belt. And Discord, I think that was a couple other things. Like, I missed the white strap one. That just looked different. <sighs> Sorry about that, folks. It's not in Corona. What happened to the pizza I had last night? All that yummy, delicious cheese. Then we have our main event of the evening, or the main wrestling match of the evening. Uh, AJ Styles taking on Jeff Hardy. AJ. You can eat, eat so much. Um, Jeff Hardy tried to end this quickly. Was a back body drop. 
Um, AJ is really striking. He really works that New Japan style so well and transitions so well into the WWE, especially when AJ Styles does it. So good. Uh, when Jeff eventually makes his comeback, again, he does all the moves you would expect him to. The reverse atomic drop. The double leg drop. Again, really good. Yeah, the reverse atomic drop. A, uh, Jeff Hardy picks, uh, takes the legs from underneath AJ, does does the double double foot. Um, goes for the pin. Then when AJ starts to make his coat, when Jeff Hardy picks him up, AJ Styles hits him again with that Pele kick, which looks actually absolutely amazing. He picks up Jeff Hardy. Um, Jeff Hardy counters with a jaw breaker. And then AJ, I don't know what happened, but but he he, but he jumped the ropes and he slipped up like, like off the apron. And that did not look pretty. That's a very quick way. To like break to like break his shin or something like like Sid style, and that is not pretty. Then let's see here. I mean, it was a fun match. And Hardy goes up to the top rope. AJ Styles kicks kicks the foot off of him. Uh, AJ eventually does rip the pant leg, exposing the knee brace. AJ goes for a calf crusher, and then. Like a weird spot, Jeff Hardy need him, need AJ Styles in the head, and it did leave a mark, but it looked like he need him like with this, like big heavy metal brace on, and that was enough to knock AJ out. Jeff Hardy pins AJ Styles. Well, that's interesting. And Jeff Hardy's your new IC champion. That was a good enough match. It's a Cheeseburger match. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Um, Sonya Deville came out. Uh, Dana Brooks wanted to check on her friend Sonya Deville. Makes sense, especially what happened after happened the weekend. Dana, uh, uh, Sonya Deville just like shoves Dana Brooks. Dana Brooks was confused. He's like, I'm going to go address everyone. She comes out, cut my music. Um, and then she, in like rage, because I think someone's going to get both her head shaved and go to NXT now. But now it's a no DQ hair versus hair match, and the loser leaves WWE. Wow. Mandy Rose is staying, I think. She's the typical Vince McMahon female wrestler. Sonya Deville might be winding up in NXT. I don't think either of these two are quitting, per se. Unless whatever happened this weekend really shook Sonya Deville. And I really couldn't blame if she if she quit. I mean, if I had, like... Some stalker woman come to my house with, and like the cop said, dude, there was a knife, duct tape, and zip ties, and a whole bunch of other things. I'd be like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I still do these, I just move. But again, that's that, that was very traumatizing. And again, they should just take that guy and just, I just say the cop should have beat him, but. Whatever. They, they took him away. He's multiple counts. I forget exactly what they were, but I think there were like three or four counts against him. And then we get to the end of the show. Oh, that's right. I forgot I wrote that down. I'm like, oh, what's that? Um, there's a backstage brawl, brawn, because there's a Firefly Funhouse. Bray's absolutely amazing. He does a play between <laughs> a Shakespearean type play using Huskus the Pig and, and Ramblin' Rabbit. And that was so funny. <laughs> so good. All about the 
Huskus was Braun. Ramblin' Rabbit played the role of Alexa Bliss. You could tell because because they were wearing the merchandise T-shirts. That was so funny. Bray Wyatt's so good at his profession. It's gonna be sad when when he leaves WWE eventually, or when WWE says, "Okay, we've had enough of you. Go back to being a WWE wrestler." Because uh, in the backstage, Braun was beating up Bray Wyatt. Uh, he threw him off or dropped him right off the loading dock. You literally see him land on a crash pad. Like, they do have to do slightly better editing. Ambulance shows up, uh, starts to take... I should have videotaped this because I'm like, I'm never... I'm... And they have terrible looking Orlando ENTs, by the way. WWE did the Orlando ENTs a huge disservice because they look so inept putting Bray onto the stretches like no even I know you don't put someone on a stretcher like that it's terrible they like literally try to like pick him up by the shoulders and legs nothing supporting his head nothing supporting his back yeah if that's how the Orlando EMT actually teaches their people how to do stuff just 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 let me fade away into the night peacefully but that just looked terrible. And then, of course, the, the ambulance starts to go away. And then it stops. And, and people are yelling, what are you doing? Get out of here. Go to, go to the local medical facility. Ambulance begins to back up. And the fiend emerges. So, again, you have the creepy red lights come out of the ambulance. Jeez, I wonder how much they pay the ambulance for that. That's just, I don't know. And that was the end of the show. Overall... It was, I mean, it was an enjoyable show. It wasn't anything terrible. The whole retribution thing is getting old. The Thunderdome looks interesting enough. They do it with the Pyro because, again, you're in a bigger arena. It's not like they're doing anything in the Amway Center, so at least the Amway Center is making some money. And that was another WWE SmackDown. So I do apologize in advance for this getting up so late. Um... I have to get ready for work because I have to go to the bank and stuff too. Then I have a hot day tonight. Yes. 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 So this will probably get up Sunday. Oh. Yep. Um, schedule changes. Um, I have a hot day tonight. Hot date is more important than NXT. I will catch re I will catch it again because to me it kind of keeps on replaying it for a while. So I'll probably just have a review. Of NXT Sunday I do have to stay at home because I have to sleep because then I actually start kind of real work on Monday so I will be reviewing SummerSlam and that will be my live stream RR and R show again only like six I can only sell like show like six seconds of matches at a time so don't say oh are you gonna post a little thing the answer is no and that was it so again, a kind of interesting show. I've had my buddies, Dr. Tom and El Vagabundo, Io Del Hobo show up. I think the only thing, like to add to what they said, is that I think, and I can't make it for the whole show, for SummerSlam, I'm going to miss probably the opening couple of matches, but that's okay. Um, shoot, I got to start moving. Yeah, this is getting done, getting done later tonight done tonight slash tomorrow so i apologize for that folks something takes something takes precedence over other things again if i got monetized that would be a different story but uh, i think the only thing maybe on SummerSlam we'll see a uh, fatal three-way for their mass versus mass versus mass for lucha house party who knows or you might have a rematch. Like, like their, their pre-shows are so random. It's not even funny. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you'd like to get your own video shout out and be one of those many, many people. Again, find me on Discord over there at Tamiya. You can also email. Oh, I have to do it one more. I can do that for SmackDown though. Because I know someone left a comment. 